Hey everyone, it's Angela with Mystic Moon bringing you guys a reading today for the Divine Feminine on the spiritual journey. So before we get started, I wanted to go into a few things. So if you guys want to go ahead and skip kind of the intro or some of the things that I wanted to talk about, just go ahead and go to the timestamp down below and it'll take you straight to the reading. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about you guys, and I do this every so often, I used to do it actually more than I do now because some people just really don't want to hear certain things and it's totally fine. I'm not always the most articulate person either. Sometimes I can come across as kind of harsh. Sometimes um, that is not a vibration that resonates for some people. Um, but we're just going to go into a variety of different stuff. So it's either going to, you know, hit you on some level, you're going to understand it, you're ready to hear it, or maybe some of you guys are just going to be like, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, <laughs> I'm going to unsubscribe to this channel. That's totally fine too. The way that I'm starting to kind of realize things, because I think for a, a long time now, I really based a lot of my, I don't want to say worth, because that just sounds like it's way too much emphasis that I'm putting on that. But to some degree, I have put some of my value and worth of just my work and what I do here in the spiritual community on my views, my subscribers, things like that. But what I'm starting to realize, and I am, of course, taking into consideration that there could be something about me, there could be something about my content that's just crap, you know, or just might be too repetitive, or it's too all over the place. It could be my delivery. It could be um, that I just don't have certain skills that maybe other people do. And so people could be pulling away from my channel and gravitating towards other channels. But it could also be, so I'm just putting this out there as well, it could also be that there's something about my readings that are a little bit more practical and down to earth. I'm definitely not and never was a person who put readings on, let's just say, well, YouTube or Instagram or really do readings, period, where I sell a fantasy. I think it's very important to realize that Nothing in life is a fantasy. Now, things can feel magical. Things can feel wonderful in certain moments in life. And that's just a beautiful, wonderful thing. A lot of art, a lot of great things are created in those magical moments. But it's kind of like a high like anything else. Drugs, alcohol, anything that you're getting high, a lot of people can become addicted to those highs and they want to continuously ride that wave of being high. And so I've seen in this community and I've also experienced it in my own life. So nothing that I'm really talking about you guys are things that I haven't gone through myself. There's no judgment here. I know that I can probably come across sometimes as being judgy or, you know, just really hammering, you know, maybe the audience or in a reading. But uh, none of these things are things I have not experienced and done myself. Definitely not perfect. There's another, and I know this is probably going to be all over the place. There's a reason that I don't claim to be a twin flame teacher, coach. There's another reason why I'm not a soul coach or a life coach. And not to say that there's anything wrong with people that have gone down that avenue. Not saying that. But me personally... I just do not feel qualified to be able to coach people on things that I am still learning and struggling with in my own journey. So that's just one of the reasons that I've just stuck to doing readings, that I do readings here on YouTube. And if people want to receive a personal reading, I don't talk about this person's this and this person's that. I don't say this is a karmic, this is a soulmate, this is a twin flame, this is meant to be, this will happen, this won't happen. It is all energy and it's all vibration, which is constantly shifting and changing. The person that you woke up 30 days ago may not be the person that you're waking up as today. And the reason why is because we are full of emotions. We're full of different energies. Different energies affect us in different ways, whether it's in the world or other people or the collective or whatever. So we're not going to be the same person that we were probably 30 days ago. There's certain things that we're always going to be, right? It's just the core of who we are. But things are constantly shifting and changing. And thank God, because that is evolution. We're growing, we're shifting, we're changing. And sometimes we're just going around in the same circles. So we're not really evolving, but 
energy is constantly shifting and changing. So when it comes to these YouTube readings, you guys, so if I do a reading on a soul connection, let's just say uh, last month, it may not be the same the next week. The reason why is because there's a constant shifts happening and taking place in the world. So nothing is really stable, to be honest. It's just not, it's not stable. And this is one of the reasons why take it as either entertainment or light guidance only. If you are basing your life decisions and you're basing your day-to-day -day activities on what reading you got, I don't care if it's a personal reading or a general reading here on YouTube, that just, this is my opinion. It tells me that you're not in control of yourself. You're looking for someone else to drive the ship. You're looking for someone else to tell you what to do. Now, there is something that is very, very um, desirable about that. I get that. There's so many times in my life that I've just wanted to give myself over to a certain belief system or certain faith and say, drive the ship, save me. Easy to do. And I'm not trying to say that that's the wrong thing to do. It just doesn't feel right for me, you know? And it also doesn't feel right for me to think that I 100% am completely driving the ship either. I like to think it's 50-50, it's an energetic field. I feel like that's why we're here on this planet. It's an energetic field and a frequency that we're either going to find a way to match with, or we're going to find a way to work against. And that just kind of determines what's showing up in our lives, what's working, what's not working, etc. So I'm not really going to go into all of my specific belief systems, but the thing is where I started on my journey in 2017 is not where I'm at today. Things have changed. Things have shifted. Things have evolved. And a lot of those changes have come in the form of negative experiences, realizing that a lot of the things that I was connected to actually were very toxic. But thank God for those toxic things because it really helped me to see what I no longer want to participate in and what I no longer am going to put up with. It's helped me to put up healthy boundaries. It's helped me to kind of figure out why I was even participating in those certain thoughts or connections or relationships, friendships, whatever. This has helped me a lot. So one of the reasons why I am really, I guess, passionate about soul connections is because I do believe that there are certain people in our lives that are meant to teach us something about ourselves, but in no way, shape or form do I promote hanging on for dear life to a person because we were told whether it is through a book, a website, a reading, we got a person that's telling us that this person is our chosen one. This person is our twin flame. This person is the one I try to steer away from that kind of thinking because this is the thing when we're focusing on one person, and that person is not on the same vibration or frequency as us. Let's just say that person is not even available. They're in another relationship. They're, they're married to someone else. Okay. Or they're, um, just highly addicted to drugs, maybe even narcissistic, very toxic, even an abusive person that can really do a lot of damage to someone to try to stay connected to that person because they see them as their twin flame. And I'm doing air quotes when I say this, because at the end of the day, you guys, these labels really don't matter. And these labels, of course, you know, a lot of these labels right now are very, very trendy. A lot of people out there are just, you know, taking this, these, these, uh, labels and they're selling things and they're doing all kinds of stuff. And that's not to say that people that are doing that, that they're doing anything wrong. It's just that I feel that in the midst of all of that pool, there are some frauds out there. There are some people out there that are just looking to hook, line, and sinker, get you to, you know, purchase reading after reading by giving you false hope or just to continue to get you to stay stuck or addicted to the information that they're pumping out. Again, there's a lot of people in this community that I absolutely respect that um, do either sell products or do readings like that. So I am not talking about those people. There's just a certain vibration with people I don't personally know. How about that? So that just should clear it up right there that I'm not talking about anybody I personally know or have met. I'm talking about people that, you know, you see certain things and you're just like, wow, or you do a reading for someone and this reader told me this and that. And I'm just thinking, what the hell are people doing? Why are there people out there in this community that are you know, spreading this kind of dysfunction. 
So I've had to put up some healthy boundaries for myself um, when it comes to accepting personal readings. It's very easy to just take a reading from anyone that comes to you. But there is a reason why I asked people to share their story with me. Give me some details. I need to know details. I need to get a feel from where this person is coming from. And of course, there are people out there that can just straight up lie and they can just tell you whatever they want to want to tell you. But usually in that type of energy, the reading is not going to come through. Um, I'm going to have a lot of difficulty even navigating that reading. There's just certain things that just don't feel right from the start. So usually you're going to know what you're dealing with, but there are some, there are some stories out there that are so outrageous and so toxic that you as a, like a person or just a, a reader, um, you, you have to make a eth like an ethical choice to, am I going to touch this or am I going to leave it alone? And you know, I've gotten to the point where there's certain things that I will not touch. I will, uh, let me turn my phone off. I don't know why I didn't, but there's certain things that I won't touch. One thing I will not touch is abuse. I will not a touch, touch a situation where someone is being physically abused or mentally abused. Now it's all about perception as well. Maybe the person that is giving me this information, you know, they might be making a lot of excuses for someone or just saying, you know, they've had a bad childhood or whatever. And there's certain instances where there may have just been someone who's emotionally unavailable. I'm talking about like people that are, um, have stalking charges, legal battles, pursuits, people that are just straight up have mental illness. They've been, you know, diagnosed or there's just like crazy behavior. I will not touch those types of energies, you know, for one, just liability purposes. But the major one is just ethically. I cannot get on board with a soul connection and talk to someone and give them advice on a situation where someone is just being so toxic, lying, being deceptive, going in between you and someone else, uh, playing games, married to someone else, but they're seeing you on the side. I'm not to, not to say that there are not situations out there where there are people that you know, have just ended up in that situation. Some people did not know someone was married. Okay. Or maybe they did, or maybe both parties are married. This is not to villainize that. And that's not to say that I don't do readings for people like that. But my point is I'm talking about abusive situations where there's abuse going on, or there's severe mental illness going on or whatever, because those types of situations require a professional. They don't require a psychic. They don't require a spiritual advisor. They don't require a tarot reading. They require true licensed help. Okay. Those types of connections and those types of people are very dangerous. And the person that's dealing with that type of person can become severely damaged. So no amount of tarot readings is going to be able to help that person. So I have done readings, like a few readings for someone before where I've had to tell them, you know what, I really don't think that this is actually helpful. So I'm moving forward this, you know, I'm basically kind of cutting it off. I say it in a very nice way. It's very caring, or at least I think it is. Maybe they're not taking it that way, but I cannot continue to co-sign that kind of stuff. So I will give up the reading. I will give up the regular income. I will give it up. And it's not to give myself a pat on the back. Like, Ooh, you're such a good person, mystic moon. That's not the reason that I'm saying it. I'm just trying to let you guys know where I'm coming from as a person. I cannot feel good about myself waking up every single day, continuing to participate in that kind of toxicity. So I have quite a few people that have come to me and I don't want to say recently or in the past, cause I just don't really want to give away that timing, but for a while, you know, there's just certain things where people are really stuck. And we're not just talking about the person that's just like, they don't really want a commitment or they're not really sure where that, no, we're talking about toxic cycles where someone is back and forth in and out of your life, lying to you, cheating on you. You know, you catch them with other women or men or whatever, you know, or they're all, you know, just like, it's just constant. Those types of situations are dangerous because it can do a number on your psyche. And, and I've, I'm talking from personal experience, you know, I experienced something 
many, many years ago, like over a decade ago. And I could never understand why I was so affected. I thought that after a period of time, when I still wasn't healed, when I still was feeling so distraught over this person and this connection, even though I had moved on in my life, okay? Why was I still feeling this wound? Why was I still feeling this pain? The reason why is because I had never gotten closure and it didn't make sense. And usually when things don't make sense with people's behavior, they're lying to you, they're, they're being deceptive, uh, they're saying negative things about you, they're cruel, um, gaslighting you when, you when you basically ask them and, and just playing games and dragging things along and then just severely just dropping you and moving on into another supply, that's usually narcissism. Now, not everybody is dealing with narcissists. Not every single person in your life that you have a negative experience is a narcissist. But this particular person, in my opinion, and what I came across the information at that time was that I was probably dealing with someone who was a narcissist. And I'm such an empathic person that it really, really severely affected me. Okay. And because of that, I was not able to let that feeling or that wound or that just situation go for a very, very, very long time. And it's one of the things that led me into this whole twin flame concept because my anger and my unresolved issues suddenly I went through this awakening where I felt all this love and I felt all of this, like, I don't want to say use the word love because it wasn't like this romantic love. Like I wanted to be with this person, you know, in that way. Cause I had already moved on. It was, I just felt forgiveness. I felt like I was letting go of all that hate. I was letting go of all of that energy and it felt so good. And I felt so free for the first time in my life. So to me, that was some sort of like a spiritual awakening. And then I came into this twin flame concept. And when I came into this twin flame concept, I thought to myself, oh, well, maybe that's what this was. But I was already in another relationship, so I wasn't looking to leave my relationship to be with my, you know, and I'm using air quotes, twin flame, the way that I was perhaps maybe trying to figure out, is that what this was, all right? I never had a for sure label on, on really anything. And so why am I going into all this, you guys? Because I'm letting you know that what I thought in 2017 is not what I think today. So that's why I don't ever want you guys to box yourselves in or to take a person, slap a label on them and say, this is it forever, because you are meant to evolve and grow and change. The person that maybe you thought was your twin flame, you know, five years ago, thank God, you have grown past that because you would probably still be in that cycle stuck and not be able to move forward with your life in a peaceful, beautiful way. And maybe match up vibrationally to somebody that is on your same page. If you were still holding on to that concept, this is my twin flame. So labels are labels. You guys, I like to just work with the energies. I like to use the term soul connection very loosely because that we're navigating through all different kinds of soul connections. We're experiencing things with people for different reasons. So I know this is all over the place, but yesterday, um, I, I listened to, um, a gal, her name is Dr. Something Romney. I don't know her first name, Dr. Something Romney, and she is a narcissist specialist. Okay. She is a licensed professional. And so, um, I listened to her quite a bit and she just basically has this channel and it's all about narcissistic abuse and just all these different things. And the thing that caught my attention is that she put on her video, narcissist slash karmic partner relationship. Now, Dr. Romney had, I guess, no idea of the concept of a karmic partner or karmic relationship. And so it was brought to her attention or she saw something on the internet. And so of course she looked into a few videos and the whole twin flame soulmate karmic relationship dynamic came up for her. And she's very concerned because she sees these so-called karmic relationships as, you know, people that are dealing with a narcissist. These are trauma bonds. These are trauma attachments and I absolutely agree. But what happens in the twin flame community is people will often stay stuck in these cycles because they feel like, well, I haven't learned my lesson yet. And yeah, you're right. If you're still going round and round with a, with a, let's just say a karmic person or trauma, you know, connection, 
um, yeah, you may not be ready to pull away until you're ready to pull away. And then when you pull away, maybe you're just like, okay, I finally learned the lesson. Now I'm ready to move forward. I think what Dr. Romney was saying was that, um, there it's being spiritualized and it, yes, a lot of these connections are being spiritualized. One thing that I actually see in this twin flame community as well is that people actually feel, and, and again, I'm, I'm not a person that, that claims to know it all, but there are other people out there that are writing books, that are writing articles, telling us what a karmic partner is, what a twin flame is, what a soulmate is, where the fuck are they getting this information? I'd like to know where this Bible is with this, the, these written words that are written in stone, that this is the recipe for this and that. Where is this coming from? I've, I wanted to know this from the very beginning. Where is this information coming from? Is it just being handed from person to person? And then we all put our own, um, you know, little flair on it. You know, we all, we all kind of like characterize it the way we want it to be or how we see it. So I'm here just to, today to tell you guys, I don't know. I don't really know if twin flames exist. I don't really know if God exists. I don't really know all of these things. It's just about what you put your belief, your belief into and what you put your faith into. That's really what it is. So anybody that's telling you this or that or this or that, that's just what they understand or what they, uh, you know, basically are, are choosing to believe in. So my point and even bringing that up is that we can get really stuck in situations or in toxic connections with people because we're getting a lot of this information that it's spiritual. You haven't learned your lesson yet. You have to fulfill your mission or your purpose. This is your twin flame. And so you guys are meant to come together and provide this amazing thing for the world. A lot of people get hung up on that. And I see this a lot in my personal readings. People are like, well, I need to come into to union because I need to go into mission. I've never told one person ever that you need your twin flame or you need another person to live your life to the fullest. You do not need anyone. Let me go ahead and make that clear again. You do not need anyone to do anything in your life. Wouldn't it be nice to connect with other people? Wouldn't it be nice to have, absolutely. But you do not need another person to heal. You don't need somebody else to come back and apologize and say you're sorry. Wouldn't it be great? Hell yes, it would be great. But it doesn't always happen that way. Do you need another person to basically help you with your mission? You do not. Wouldn't it be nice? Yes, but you do not need it. So all of these things that are being pumped into people with this, these concepts, wherever the hell they're coming from, I feel are very damaging because it's halting a lot of people on their spiritual journeys or just their just journeys in life that they feel like they need to, they have to have this or that in order to be able to move forward. You do not. You don't. This is a journey of the self. I've always promoted that. I really have always identified more with this twin flame concept is it's a journey to the self. It's a journey back to the self. I feel like it's another spiritual thing. It's, it's like, I'm not comparing it, but it's like when I think of Christianity, my entire family, not entire, but most of my family, three quarters of my family are Christian. Okay. There's a lot of things about that belief system that I do do connect with, but there's some things that I do not connect with. So, you know, that, that's, that's one avenue. And then there is, I, you know, I was going to a, a Hindu temple, you know, for a period of time, the whole Eastern philosophy thing. There's certain things that I can take from that and certain things I'm just like, yeah, it just doesn't really resonate with me. And then let's just say this whole uh, twin flame, you know, journey or whatever. There's some things that really resonate with me and other things that don't. I do not believe that your twin flame is the other half of your soul. That's just my opinion. It may be, maybe I don't really get it. Maybe I am just not a part of the special people. Okay. But I do not believe that anyone is the other half of your soul. I believe that you come into this life as a whole soul. You don't need, so that would just go against my concept of you don't need another person to complete you. It's a beautiful, beautiful thought. It's like, what is that movie? A Jerry Maguire, you complete me. It's beautiful. It sounds amazing, of course, you know, but it's just, it's, it, that's just not a healthy way to think about love and it's not a healthy way to think about things. Now I'm not sitting here acting like 
I got it all together. I really don't, you guys. I suffer with codependency. I've had codependency issues my whole life, and I probably will to the day I freaking expire. But I'm aware of it, and I realize that a lot of things that I've experienced in my life are because of those codependent issues that I have. I also have overeating issues right now. I've actually had them now for the last probably 10 years. I've been cushioning my feelings and cushioning a lot of things with food. So I'm not coming from a place where I'm just sitting here saying, oh, you know, I'm all evolved over here. I'm not. I'm just like you guys, which is why I'm not sitting here trying to do classes. Again, nothing wrong with that, but I'm just, it's not for me. I'm not going to sit here and teach you guys and try and, and, and do, you know, whatever. I, I just, I'm going to just do the, the readings. And yeah, there's certain things when you're doing a reading as a reader, you guys, and anybody that says that they don't do this is either just not aware of it or just full of shit. One of the two, when you do your own readings, there is going to be a part of your, your energy as well as a part of your um, you know, thoughts and, and, and your judgments that you put into things. So you guys are either going to resonate with my vibration or you won't. So if you don't, you're going to fall away. I think I had a comment the other day that was something about, um, that I was, uh, you know, the, the cards that came out that I was really interjecting a lot of my own, um, judgment or something like that. I can't remember exactly what the comment was. And, um, it, it, it made sense to a degree, but the way that it was being presented is that I was purposely trying to, um, I was purposely trying to inflict my own shit basically into the reading and really the cards that came through and the subject at hand very much showed a certain type of energy. And I was relaying that. And I think that maybe the person that was listening to it was very triggered by it because you know, that wasn't for them. The message wasn't for them. That's the great thing. If something isn't for you, move on. I've never been the kind of person to leave a negative review. I've been, never been the kind of person where I don't like this or I don't agree or it didn't resonate with me today. Fuck. I don't get that. I seriously don't get it. I just move on. <laughs> so, um, that kind of stuff annoys me and I just delete it because I just don't want to see it. it. doesn't belong on my channel. Start your own channel and, and go on a rant on your own. That's why I have my channel. That's why I'm going on this rant right now. Cause it's mine. Cause I can do that. Okay. And if you don't care for it, no worries. That's the thing. We can fade away and align somewhere else that does make sense for us. So anyways, I know that that talk was all over the place and wow, we're at 30 minutes and I still feel like there's so many more things that I could say, but I'm just going to leave it there because, well, actually I did make a list. Okay. And I went over a lot of these things. So one, I guess one other thing that I'm going to say, toxic is toxic. Okay. Even if you guys are dealing with someone who's very loving and very kind, but they're seeing you and someone else, I don't care what kind of label you want to slap on it. It's still a toxic situation. It's still unhealthy. It's still not good for you. It's not good for you. It's not good for the person that you're dealing with. And it's not good for the person that they're lying to, to be with you. Okay. So I always suggest for people to pull away from those types of connections. Do not enable other people to continuously stay stuck in that cycle of basically having it all. If someone has it all, it's just a human thing. If you're, if there's no consequences for your actions, like a child, if there's no consequences for your actions, or you don't have to make tough choices, then you're not going to make those cho choices. You're just going to continue to take the easy way out. A lot of people do that. The easier thing is to turn a blind eye. The easier thing is to just go towards something that you know is toxic for you because you don't want to deal with the hardship of doing the right thing. Okay. So I don't necessarily tell people what to do, but what comes to the readings, obviously, I mean, there have been times you guys where there's an extremely just like situation where I'm like, wow, like I wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole with the cards that come out are like, wow, you know, this is really something. There's something for you to, you know, it's, it's very positive. I relay that. But if it's negative, I also relay that too. So I'm not the kind of person that's going to candy coat stuff, but I'm also not the kind of person that's going to say, this is something that you, you have to walk away from this. You have to leave this person behind because if you don't, then this is, you know, it's up to you. This is what I'm seeing here for you. That would be the best course of action, but you have free will. 
And this is not forever, meaning this, this cycle could shift and change. Your person could perhaps shift and change because guess what? They have free will. So this isn't forever, but right now what I'm seeing is this is probably what you're, you're looking at and what you're working with. And if that doesn't make you happy, then you definitely need to make choices that are going to make you happy. That's really where I'm coming from you guys with all of this. So why am I doing this reading today? Normally on a Tuesday, I would do a reading on, on twin flames, on your divine masculine. Didn't feel guided to do that today. There is a portion of this reading where we are going to go into the divine masculine energy with the twin or with the uh, divine feminine's energy, but it's going to be in relation to her divine masculine side within herself, or it could be for someone that you're dealing with, someone that you might see as your divine masculine, or it could just be your future divine masculine, somebody that you're wanting to draw into your life your, your, for your highest good in your highest frequency. So it can be looked at that way. I just wasn't feeling it this week. I wasn't feeling it this week going into what your divine masculine's messages are to you, even though I do have a 20 or no, it's not a 20 minute. It's a 10 minute, I think, uh, daily reading where I did do that because I understand that not every single person that's watching my videos is struggling. Hell, there's a lot of you that are like, I'm so done with this twin flame crap. I'm so done with focusing on another person. I just want to focus on myself, which is another reason that I'm bringing this type of reading to the table. Guess what? These types of readings don't get very hardly any views. You guys are going to see it today. This particular reading, when I say divine feminine and I don't include masculine and I don't include, you know, what they want you to know and, um, you know, who's thinking about you and all those catchy click bait kind of titles, you're going to see the views are crap. My views are crap anyways. And, you know, again, I'm very open to the fact that I just may not have it anymore. I just may not be people may not be resonating with me anymore that I just suck as a reader. I mean, that absolutely, I'm not full of myself. That absolutely could be why my channel is tanking. You know, I have been struggling, you know, it's so funny. I really thought that if I reached a hundred thousand subscribers that I would feel like a success. I don't know why I had that, that, that number. I had that number in my mind. If I have a hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube, I just feel like I've made, I've, I'll, I'll have made it. I'll, I'll be someone. Guess what? If, and I'm not even sure that I can even make it to a hundred thousand. You guys, I don't even, I'm not even sure it's possible. Not at this time, not at this time with, I don't know what the hell's going on, but even if it did happen, is it really going to make me happy? Is it really going to make me feel like a better person? Is it really going to make me feel super successful because I have a hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube? It won't, it won't like anything else. Nothing lasts. And it's, it's not something that is going to make me, it's just not going to make me feel whole. So the thought's nice. It's kind of like when I meet my person or when my person and I come in together and then I'll be happy. When I lose this weight, then I'll be happy. You know what? I'm going to tell you guys right now. The skinniest I ever was, was back in 2007. I could actually fit into my daughter, Kayla, who she was, I think, 13 maybe at the time. 13 or 14. I could fit in her freaking jeans. I was like, Oh my God, how is this possible? How can I actually fit into my daughter Kayla's jeans? Well, it's because I just was high on life. I wasn't doing drugs or anything like that. Never been the kind of person that drinks or does drugs or anything. I'm just too freaked out. It's not like a moral thing. I'm just too freaked out. Um, too much of a control freak too. So that's the thing. I just was like, not maybe not eating. It wasn't an eating disorder. I just think I was just kind of like, just so go, 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 go. I was newly single. I had just come out of a four or five year relationship where I was, you know, living with someone who was an alcoholic, by the way. So I had a lot of codependency issues. Um, and was just severely still totally fucked up, but whatever. I mean, I could fit in my daughter's pants. And I just remember I had never been so skinny. I had never felt so good in clothes. I had never felt so more, so much more attractive in life. I was the most miserable. <laughs> oh my God. I was the most miserable I had ever been in my entire life. I had attracted someone into my life. That was just, oh God, it seemed to be just the most amazing thing, but the worst nightmare of my entire life. Okay. And I had been with worse people and, and, and more like deeper connections than that one. But 
for whatever reason, that time in my life, it was just the perfect disaster. I had never been just belittled so much in my life. I had never had somebody make me feel so low with the things that they said to me and the things that they projected onto me and just all that crap. But my point of even saying that, you guys, is that I was my skinniest and I was the most miserable I had ever been in my entire life. So if I think now that if these 100,000 subscri 100, subscribers are going to make me happy, it won't. If I think if I drop this 50 pounds that I should probably drop just for my health, that I'm going to be happy, I might feel better and more energetic, but it's not going to do wonders on my self-esteem. My self-esteem issues are not about my weight or my looks. My self-esteem issues go way deeper than that. So it's about addressing the inner stuff. So a lot of these thoughts that we're having, I'll be happy when this person calls me, I'll be happy when this person and I come back together or in union, or I'll be happy when I fall in love or when I have a partner. These are all things that sound good, but it doesn't fix anything. So will I continue to do readings on soul connections? Absolutely. Will I continue to do readings here and there, you know, messages from your masculine or what this person's thinking about you? Absolutely. Because there's a lot of people out there that want to know these things. There's a lot of people that are just in different levels on their spiritual journey. But will I also do readings that will totally not get a lot of views that are just not going to be popular? Yes, I will. And why am I doing that? Because they're important. That's why their reality. And reality sometimes sucks. People want to continue to plug in a fantasy, but not all of it is bad. It's just the person that is connecting to it sometimes, or, you know, taking it and saying, yes, this is my situation. And then it turns out that maybe it's not, that's when it can become negative. It's, it's not actually the content even though I think as readers, you know, we do have an obligation to our audience to post certain things and to say certain things like disclaimers, like, you know, nothing is guaranteed and this may not be for you. Only take what resonates. I think that's very smart and responsible to do that. Um, you know, not label things. That's why I don't do yes or no readings. I don't do pendulum stuff, not saying anything negative about people that do that. Um, and I don't do is, you know, what kind of relationship this is? This is a twin flame karmic. So hell no, I don't do that kind of stuff because that's not going to be helpful to people. That's just going to actually keep people stuck. And that's actually taking the control out of somebody else's hands. I don't get personal readings. You guys, I don't get personal readings. I don't even do my own tarot readings. I don't even plug into any of this stuff. Okay. Whatever comes through my reading, sometimes it resonates for me and other times it has nothing to do with me. Um, so I mean, wow, what kind of a person such as myself who is a tarot reading and does this for a living would try to tell you like, I don't even get personal readings. Why should you? Yeah. Sometimes I think that, yeah, I do. <laughs> I'm just being real. I just, I don't do it. I don't feel the need for it. I, I not to say like, Ooh, I'm just so evolved that I just make my own decisions. I just, I'm going to change shit up. I'm going to do things my way. And I don't want somebody else trying to tell me what I need to do. Things I already know. It's just a confirming. That's a lot of the readings that people get. It just confirms what they already know, you know? So just remember that you don't really need any of this stuff. You don't really need to watch these readings. You don't even really need to get a reading, you know? But if you want to do it, do it because maybe you're just confused. You want to confirm something for yourself, something that you already know, confirm maybe that you're on the right track. Maybe you do need to be snapped back into reality that the person that's married, that's blocking you on Facebook is maybe not the one. I don't know. Not that I would say that to you, but maybe you need a little bit of a wake up call that that might not be the best avenue to continue to send the messages, right? You know? So sometimes we need readings for those reasons, I guess. I just don't personally seem to need them. And it ain't because I'm so great. It's nothing. It, yeah. Anyways. Wow. All right. I think that that's pretty much it. You guys, that's what I got for you today. That was 40 minutes of just blah, 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 blah. And either you guys listen to it or you're just like, see ya, see ya. <laughs> this reading is for the divine feminine. That's what we have today. The reading for the divine feminine. That's you, the viewer. You can be male or female. I will try to take the he or she out of it, realizing that uh, we're dealing with energies here, not not actual sex. So 
divine feminine, whoever you are, whoever's watching this video, you want to watch this reading for yourself. You want to watch this reading because you want to grow. You want to change. You want to heal. You want to evolve. You don't want to hang on to something toxic. And even though we're going to go into a little bit of the divine masculine, we're going to come from the aspect of where you're at and what you can do with that energy to help yourself. That's where we're really coming at. So we're going to go into it. We're going to see, I and mean, I actually wrote down a thing here. Hold on for just a sec. Current vibration of this feminine on the spiritual journey right now. What does this current vibration look like? Let's take a look. This right here is called the gold. No, it's not the golden lantern. Uh, the lantern oracle. Renewal. Ooh, look at this. I like that already. So we have renewal, current vibration. We have a regeneration begins with decay. So this is the thing. If you feel like you are slowly dying, if you feel like you are just stagnant right now, that is an indication to you that something needs to shift. Something needs to change. This is also very important too, that a lot of the concepts in the new age right now are very much positive thinking, positive vibes, which yes, are important. But guess what? That's not reality. <laughs> the reality is that you're going to probably feel somewhat negative. You're going to have some dark days. You're going to deal with some dark ass people. There's a lot of them out there. So even though it's nice to be love and light, it's not reality that you're going to feel love and light all the time. You're going to have to feel an amount of shadow, an amount of decay in order to spark or initiate that boost to want to push you into another direction. Ultimately, maybe towards the light, yes, or nice and balanced in the dark and light. But this renewal right now, this decay, this darkness, this feeling is coming up for us for a reason, you guys. And I'm putting myself in that category. It is coming up for a reason. It is helping us to see that something is off. Something needs to change. Something needs to shift. This right here is called the Enchanted Map Oracle. Follow the leader. I love that this is coming up like this, you guys. Do we continue to go down the path that we're on? Or has this path kind of dried up for us? Is this path right now just kind of like it's not really what we thought? There are some people out there that I actually personally know that um, are shifting gears on their spiritual journey, and I think it's absolutely wonderful. It may not be what I 100% you know, identify with, but they are, and they have found peace, and they have found happiness, and I think that that is wonderful. They're pulling away from the new age. They're going into another direction. I wish them so much happiness because I know whatever path that they're on is leading them to their ultimate happiness, whatever that looks like for them. It might not be what I envision as ultimate happiness, or it might not be my path, but it's their path and I'm happy for them. I'm happy for them because in their path, they were decaying. Things were not working out for them on that path. So whenever that happens, it pushes us in a new direction. So follow the leader. Are we going to continue to follow other people? Are we going to continue to follow what other people are doing? Or are we being inspired perhaps by people out there that have already learned that lesson? And so helping us to maybe see, you know, there is difference here. There, there can be something else. You don't have to continue to follow the straight and narrow path that you've been on just because you've been on it for so long. Time to shift gears, you guys, on your path. That's what I'm seeing there. This is called the good tarot. What do we got? Five of earth. Oh, five of pentacles. That five of pentacles energy. I mean, talk about decay. Talk about feeling lost. When I see the five of pentacles, it's always reminded me of just being completely devoid, spiritually deprived, empty. You're just running on empty. Every door that you've tried to open has just either will not open or has been slammed in your face. There is a reason. So I feel that a lot of these divine feminines, whatever your spiritual beliefs are, whatever path you're on, 
Something is happening for a reason. You're at the bottom for a reason. You are decaying. Something is dying off for you for a reason. There is a new path opening up for you. So you see this path, it's not straight and narrow. It is curvy. So we're meant to just kind of be on a little bit of a dizzying, is that a word? Dizzying path. We're meant to get a little car sick. <laughs> but that's the thing. Without that uncomfortable feeling, you wouldn't know what you do you know how you wouldn't know how to relieve yourself. You wouldn't know how to feel better. So we're being given an opportunity with this feeling of decaying, this feeling of being shut out, deprived. Something's not working. I can't keep banging on this door. It won't open. It's not opening for a reason. There's a reason that we're feeling this way. There's a reason that this is happening. You guys, it is actually helping us to find the way. So don't be afraid to give up certain things that you've been plugged into for a long time, just because that's all, you know, open yourself up to new opportunities to grow and to change, open yourself up to perhaps new concepts, old concepts I feel are dying off for a lot of us. So let's go into the lessons and challenges that this divine feminine is currently facing. So this is a combination of decks called heal yourself and mystical healing reading cards. What types of things are coming up as lessons and challenges that this divine feminine is currently facing? We have entrapment. Very interesting. So maybe some divine feminines feel trapped. Okay. They feel like they can't move. They can't do what they want to do. Any which way or direction that they go, they feel like there's a block. That's that five of pentacles energy. So this is coming up for a reason. It is here to help us evolve. It's here to help us change some aspect of ourselves. This is called the psychic oracle and tarot. Oh yeah. Look at that moon's energy. The moon is the shadow self. Look at that in this deck. So shadow, this is helping us to face our fears. This is coming up because we are blocked by our fears. That's really what it is. This is like eight of swords vibe for me. Eight of swords vibe is we are, it seems like we're trapped, but actually we're just trapped in our own minds. We think we can't move. We think that we're stuck. We're actually not. But if you think you are, you are what you think. Okay. So there's some kind of message here that a fear of becoming healthy, a fear of becoming free actually is very scary. So there's a fear of actually being free here. Some of us have been entrapped or in, in, in just entwined in a toxic situation or just a way of thinking for so long that we are afraid to free ourselves and to look any other way. Sometimes we become comfortable in our pain, our dysfunction. Sometimes it's just easier to stay stuck. So this is coming up because it's giving us, it's challenging us for a reason. It's challenging us to shift and to change. Yeah, look, we can't make it up. You guys, we are experiencing rebirth. This is, this is, this is our guide's way of coming in and saying, you need to experience a rebirth here. A rebirth wants to take place, but the longer that you fight it, the more that you're going to decay, the more that you are going to feel trapped inside. And we have temperance, healing, have patience with yourself. It's almost like have patience with yourself, dear child. I don't know why I wanted to say that, but I did <laughs> have patience. But this right here and not in this deck, but it usually shows an angel that is holding two cups and the two cups are kind of going back and forth, tempering back and forth. So there's something right now that's being tempered in your life. You guys, there's something that's going back and forth for a reason. Maybe you're even going back and forth. You're going back and forth with, you know, this is not good. Okay. I can deal with it. No. Nope, yes. No. Yes. So right now you're going through a rebirth right now. So there's a period of time where things might not be 100% clear. The moon also indicates there is some sort of, um, confusion. There's some sort of cloudy energy around what you're thinking, what you're experiencing, what you're feeling. So this is a cycle though. And that, what is the cycle leading to? The cycle is actually the next card would be the devil. The devil is facing those fears, facing those fears. Next card after that is tower. We are tearing down the wall. Pink Floyd, we're tearing down the wall. I don't know why that's coming up, but yeah, there it is. <clears throat> and gosh, that, that movie, Pink Floyd, the wall. I love that movie. I mean, for, I'm an eighties kid. So I just grew up on that movie, but 
pretty amazing. You know, that entire album, that entire just analogy and philosophy and just behind the self, the shadow, all that stuff, tear down the wall. So anyways, um, I mean, it could be of course other things too, but that right there to me is there's major healing and transformation that's occurring right now on your spiritual journey. There's a reason that you're going through some dark times. There's a reason that these shadows are coming up. There's a reason why everything just seems to be discombobbled. So have patience, dear child. This is a process, but you're going to get through it. You're going to get through it. All right. So now we're going to go into the self-help and opportunities for this divine feminine to grow, heal, and ascend. All right. Let's take a look. This is kind of a cool deck here. It is called the Akashic Oracle. Oop. So we have one that just flew out and that's it. Heart Song. Heart Song. Let's read this. It says, what is the song that brings joy to your life? What is the truth at the core of your being? What is in your heart that is so strong that you can't hold it all to yourself? Let it spill out as an expansion of energy and an explosion of love. Now is the time to bring your gifts to the forefront, share your creativity with the world and move into a space of unlimited potential. We are here to sing, to dance, to experience beauty and to laugh with joy. Our bodies are for loving and our hearts guide the way. Wow. What I'm getting here, you guys, do what's in your heart. Sometimes we get so focused on survival and we get focused also on that fear. Like I fear that if I do something that I want to do, that things are going to fall apart in my life or that somehow I'm going to lose this or I'm going to lose that. This is basically saying what, if you're not doing what your heart brings, if you're not doing what brings your heart joy, you're going to slowly continue to decay. You're going to slowly feel like death not a physical, but you're going to slowly feel like death in your life. So listen to your heart. What is your heart telling you to do? What does your heart truly know? That is really going to help us to ascend. That's going to help us to grow. That's going to help us to heal. And what other ways can we take care of ourselves? This right here is called the sacred self-care oracle. Sound healing, beautiful. It's funny, song, music, sound healing, something about vibrations. So there's something about our frequency with the things that are around us, the vibration, something needs to be cleared. So some of you guys have singing bowls, fantastic, um, but you don't need that technically. Um, there's lots of things that you can do to just kind of clear that frequency, to clear that vibration. If there's certain things that you don't want to listen to anymore, certain things you don't want to hear anymore, certain things that you're subscribed to or whatever, this might be the time to change that vibration, shift it, you know, pull out of it. I was going to say, I've lost so many subscribers over this last, I went from, uh, 70 to, I think, um, well, 88 point, 88 point to 70 um, over the weekend to today, we're on Tuesday. Um, I lost, I can't do the math right now. I'm at 213. That means something, you know? And again, it may just be my uh, last reading just sucked. Maybe people just don't like me. It's, I got it. You know, it's, I'm not trying to say it can't be that, but it's something that is vibrationally, like you don't like what you're hearing sometimes. Sometimes you got to pay attention to that. Sometimes you got to also pay attention to, you know what, there's something in this that I'm like, I feel like, I feel like that this speaks to me. And I did get a lot of positive feedback because it was not all negative. I actually got a lot of people that were just like, this is exactly what I needed at this time. Thank you so much for just being raw and real. Some people are ready. Other people are not. It's okay. And that's, then not to say that my words and my advice work right, but we are where we are on our journeys and some people are ready to grow, ready to heal, ready to ascend, ready to let go of things or let go of expectations or let go of people that we are allowing to control our lives or to dictate to us whether we can be happy or not. I always say, let's pull away from that kind of thinking. Why are we putting the power of us into someone else's hands? No. So... That to me is what sounds good to you, you guys. Being happy, investing in yourselves, taking the power out of other people's hands and putting it back into your own hands. That sounds awesome to me. Does that sound good to you? Perfect. That's what I'm getting from that. Let's do it. Sign me up. 
I no longer want to subscribe to the story, okay? I don't no longer want to subscribe to the story that someone else is going to make it all better. We have six of cups. What is the six of cups? The six of cups is our past. I'm getting here that we need to heal from our past, okay? Guess what? Our past is really a treasure. It was a gift, but we're not meant to hold on to our past selves or people from our past for the rest of our lives. We are meant to, to grow and evolve past the past, past these past connections. Let's treasure it. Let's honor it for what it was. But we can't take the past with us. We can only be in this present moment. We only really have control of this present moment. So spirit is telling us here through that card, you can treasure the past. You can honor the past. You can remember it. All the past happiness that you shared with someone. But if it's preventing you from being able to move forward in your life in a sound and healing way, then you got a problem. Okay. And we can spiritualize it all day long. The reason that I still feel this connection is because we're meant to be. And I'm not here to say that that can't be the story. But if you're not living your life and you're not showing up for yourself today, or you are waiting on someone else to bring you that ultimate happiness, you're doing yourself a disservice because you're probably missing out on a lot of opportunities with a lot of people that are meant to bring you something and we're just constantly pushing against that door that wants to open, but it won't open. It's not opening for a reason. So I'm getting for a lot of you, it is time for us to leave the past behind. It doesn't mean that the past could never return or that the past couldn't come back at some point, but at least we'll be enjoying ourselves. And then if the past does come back, we didn't waste all that time waiting for it. It just happened. It just flowed into our lives. We're not waiting on pins and needles just in case it doesn't happen. And then we're pissed that we wasted so much time waiting for something that never happened because that reading told me it would, or that reader told me this or that F that. Okay. So that kind of thinking I'm getting here, we're pulling away from it. We are pushing forward into the present moment. We're leaving the past behind we can enjoy it for what it was, but we're not taking it with us. We're not taking the baggage. We're not taking the expectations. We're not taking it with us. We're leaving it behind. We're focusing on our own healing and our own happiness. And if the past wants to return or come back or catch up with us later, great. And if it doesn't, we're going to be okay. That's what I'm getting here that our heart is truly telling us. At least that's what my heart's telling me. So let's now take a look at that purpose and mission. Again, our purpose and mission, yes, it can include other people, but if other people are not on board with it, it's not meant to be at that time or in this life. It could be another one. Who knows? But you can get on board with your purpose and your mission today. You don't need someone else to complete you. You don't need another person to do this mission or purpose or to be someone in this life. That's a, a very codependent um, thought, way of thought, way of being. Definitely not healthy. <clears throat> so now let's take a look. I think I already said this. So let's take a look at our purpose mission energy. This right here is called the Gaia Oracle. It's our Gaia Oracle. Let us to know about our mission and our purpose. We have sacred journey. I love this. Oh, I love this. I just want to cry because it just goes to show you your journey is sacred. No matter how you got here, no matter what you've experienced before, it's all been sacred for a reason. Everybody that has come into your life and touched it and affected it negatively or positively, it's all been for you. It's all been for your transformation. It's all been for the, like these cycles. Everybody that has connected with you in this life is a part of your sacred soul, spiritual family. We're all connected. You know, all these cycles through life, everything that's happening right now in the world, everybody is learning. Everybody is experiencing something for the, themselves. You know, we're all in this together. And a lot of us will continue to fight, blame, project all these things, expect, attach, 
That's just a part of the human experience. That's a part of being a human being. But we're all here for the same reason. We're all here to experience life in different ways, but we're here to evolve. That's what we're all really here for is to evolve and to eventually find that peace. This is the angels, gods, and goddesses oracle. Um, angel of emergence. It's time for the real you to emerge. Do you see this? So this, if, this angel of emergence is saying it's time for you, the real you to emerge. It's time for you to emerge. It's time for you to come out. It's time for you to live your life. It's time for you to step into your mission and purpose. And some of you guys maybe, you know, don't know what that is. Some of us kind of misunderstand what that even is. Sometimes people's purpose is to just be peace, to be love, to be understanding, to be forgiving. It doesn't have to be your purpose and mission involves going out into the world and doing this and doing that and creating this or create. Sometimes your purpose is to just be you. So it's not this big extravagant thing. It's just to be yourself. It's to be a more like a highest high version of yourself to inspire other people just by being you. That is enough of a purpose and a mission in life. It doesn't have to be this extravagant thing. So let's not get stuck in that. I feel because I don't have this great dream or this great talent that I'm not going to be able to make a difference in the world. That's nonsense. Sometimes your mission and purpose is to just be you and that's enough. This is called the Art of Love Tarot. Actually, it's called something else now. I don't know why it changed, probably for legal purposes with the people that created it. But when I bought it, it said the Art of Love Tarot. You guys will see it down below as a different name. I just don't know what it is. Oh, queen of hearts, six cents. That's beautiful. Yeah, we're here to be love. We're here to be light. We're here to be connected to our higher selves, you know, to spread awareness with our intuitions feminine. So if you guys are watching this video, you're meant to be a divine feminine. You're meant to carry more of that divine feminine energy. And it doesn't mean that you can't ever transfer into your or shift into your masculine side. But I'm getting here that the majority of your time on this planet will be spent in your divine feminine energy with that queen of cups. Okay. Some of you guys are meant to be healers, empaths, counselors, um, psychics, people that, you know, people gravitate towards you because you have a loving vibe and presence about you. They just feel that they can connect with you. Even if you're just a good conversationalist, even if a lot of people just flock to you because you're just a good listener, that is your purpose. You see, that's your purpose. That's who you really are. And when you connect with who you really are, you are living your life. You are transforming lives. You're transforming yourself. That is who you truly are. So it can be small. It could be big. It could be extravagant. It's all the same. It all means the same. It's all equally impactful. And I don't know if that's a word, but that's the word I'm getting. All right. Now we're going to take a look in the divine masculine energy. So this could be the divine masculine part of you, or this could be the person that you might see as your divine masculine at this time, because that could shift and change, or just that's who you see as your divine masculine. Totally up to you how you guys want to experience these messages. So just take it as it resonates for you. This particular deck is called the Healers of the Earth Oracle. It's a beautiful oracle. Anonymous, masked, hiding, secret surveillance. Interesting. Okay, so let's get a tarot with this. This is called the Light Seers Tarot, and I want to see why Spirit is bringing forth the message about divine masculine energy in this way. Wow, judgment. Resurrection. I feel like some of you guys, um, right now what's going on with your divine masculine, first of all, your divine masculine is coming out. It's emerging, okay? So that could be a lot of that message that just came through about um, the real you is emerging. This masculine side of yourself is emerging, helping to kind of guide you, your masculine side, to emerge into something that maybe you've been hiding from or masking your entire life. So this is about being authentic, no longer afraid. I also get if you're looking at this from the aspect that this is your divine masculine, someone outside of yourself, 
I feel that what's happening right now is that a lot of decisions that you've made, a lot of thoughts that you've had about this masculine, there's something that is being, um, there's something that is just not quite adding up. This does not mean that this is not your divine masculine. I just feel like something has been purposely kept from you. You're meant to continue to evolve and to continue to resurrect. I see judgment as resurrection. You're, con you're, you're being guided to continue to move forward on your journey. So something in a way is being kept from you and keep kept secret from you because it's a mystery that you will still continue to push and follow through for your spiritual ascension and journey. If we have the answers right now, let's just say you were given the answer. This is this and this is that. Are you really going to push or try? Are you really going to expand? If you got all the answers right now, then why the hell would you continue to go after your dreams or your goals and you're getting everything just handed to you? So I feel like there's a bit of mystery around the divine masculine. There's a little bit of mystery around who it really is or who it is or who it isn't. Because I feel like if you guys had those specific understandings or knowings of this is it, that you guys would not continue to evolve, that you guys would just basically just stay focused and stuck on that one person. And that's not what spirit wants, because if we're focusing on that one person, we're not really truly living our lives for ourselves. So I feel like some things are being kept from some of us divine feminines for a reason. You can, you, the mystery is to, con, your mis, the mystery of life, the mystery of everything is, is pushing you forward. Uh-huh. Frozen in time. You don't want to get stuck. We already saw this. Frozen in time. We have stuck, avoiding change, locked in the past. We just saw the six of cups. We don't want to get locked in the past. Some of us are very focused on this. I'm frozen in time. I can't move forward. I can't live. I can't be happy until I'm with this person. They're my other half. They're my divine masculine. I'm getting that type of thinking is actually keeping a lot of us stuck. Okay. And a lot of us don't want to open up to the fact that maybe the person that we thought was our divine masculine may not be our divine masculine, may not be the divine masculine. Okay. Some of us may be trying to take a person that we just can't get over or that we have, let's just say, a trauma bond or trauma attachment to, somebody that has abandoned us, so it has triggered our abandonment issues. That would be a trauma attachment bond. That, that right there, we wish that things could change. So we're holding on to this hope that if we say this is my divine masculine, that somehow we're going to magically come together with this person. That's keeping a lot of people stuck, I feel. But that doesn't mean that's everyone's story. No matter what, if it's your divine masculine or not, you should not be waiting for your masculine to return. You should not be putting your life on hold for your masculine. You should be living your life to the fullest right now. So that's another reason why I feel anonymous is coming up. Something is being purposely hidden from you because if you had all the answers right now, you wouldn't continue to grow. Spirit says, move forward, continue to move forward, continue to grow. Yep. Four pentacles. You want to let go. Four pentacles means I'm holding on to it. I'm holding on for dear life. This is my story. No one can change it. You know what? You're right. I can't change it. Nobody else can change it. Just you. You're the only person that can control holding on or letting go. It's totally up to you, divine feminine, what you want to do. So gauge it with how you feel. Do you feel good? Do you feel inspired? Do you feel like you're living your life to the fullest or do you feel like things are crumbling? Do you feel stuck? Do you feel like you're really craving something else? That is an indication that it's time to let go. Stop letting the past dictate your life. Stop letting it cause you to feel like you can't just change your life and go in another direction. Stop saying, staying locked to someone in the past. They're in the past for a reason right now. Could they return? Sure. They absolutely could, but don't waste the rest of your life waiting for that. So that is what we have, you guys. So this, if this is your own masculine side, what I'm also getting to is that you fear really evolving and really opening yourself up to new experiences. So it's about perhaps taking risks, opening yourself up to new ways of maybe making money or career choices. Maybe some of you guys are feeling like, I just don't know if I can do it. Your masculine side is pushing you 
to open yourself up to new experiences. So I hope that that resonated with some of you guys. Now we're going to go ahead and end this reading with these are messages to have for, for us on like advice and messages for us to connect back to God source, the divine, the universe, however you guys resonate with that. This is going to help you to connect back to that. Connect back to wholeness. This is the Wild Offering Oracle. Oh, that's the one that wants to come out, so we'll take it. Oh, we have positivity, okay? Positivity. And it's funny because we actually just talked about that earlier, being positive. Positive is good, absolutely. High vibe all the way. But to pretend that darkness and that negativity don't exist or that when these things come up that we shame ourselves for it, that actually can be quite dangerous. It says, if you can even find one thing to be grateful for, it will restore you to the light. That's why it is important. We definitely don't want to focus on all the negative because when we do that, then we just feel like crap. Let's focus on something that we are grateful for. And I've actually had to do this. I've been going through a really just tough time lately. And I've had to focus because I've, I have people that are connected to me that are going through way worse things than I am. I mean, things that I can't even fathom. So when I think about, wow, I'm really grateful that I have my health, right? That's one thing I can be grateful for. This does restore me somewhat back to the light. So I'm not so focused on all of that darkness and everything that's going wrong in my life. Please, dear God, let me always feel gratitude for something. You see, just something, even a tiny thing, even in the hardest of situations. So God, the universe, however you connect, is telling you, even if it's just one thing, focus on that. It's not about being delusional and pretending that the other stuff doesn't exist. But if you're in a dark time and you're going through something hard, try to focus on at least one thing that is good in your life. This will actually help to balance you out and help you to restore the light within. Okay? So that's guidance during dark times. Sounds super simple. <laughs> it sounds so easy. Sometimes that can be a real challenge for us, but it is a choice, you guys. It is a choice. Oh, unconditional love, the divine mother. That's beautiful. You know, this is the thing. That's one of the things that I've always seen kind of like that twin flame journey or really these soul connections. I think that unconditional love, and this is just my opinion, unconditional love can sometimes be again, misconstrued by, um, enabling. Well, I unconditionally love you so you can continue to treat me like trash. That's not unconditional love. Actually, <laughs> that's just enabling somebody's bad behavior. Unconditional love means that I love you and me enough to know that right now that we may not be good for each other. So I'm going to step away in the name of love. And I will unconditionally love you from afar because I realize that you may not have the tools that you need in order to be any different right now, but I still love you. I just can't be a part of your life. And I'm doing that for myself and I'm doing it for you because that is the healthiest thing to do. We can still be in the name of unconditional love and take care of ourselves. So let's not misconstrue that unconditional love. Unconditional love does not equal being a doormat for people to treat you like trash. Okay. Thank you, divine mother for helping me to give and receive the love I deserve. Okay. Do you see that? The love I deserve. I know I don't, don't deserve to be abused by you. I know I don't deserve to be, you know, uh, subjected to your games, to your manipulations. That's not good for me. And that's not good for you. But I unconditionally love you because I connect to the highest version of you. I know that's not who you truly are. Who you truly are is this person of light, but who we are in this 3d existence is something's just off. And until we can clear it and heal it, I'm going to step away. There are many people in my life that I absolutely wish that things could be different, that we could be connected, but we cannot, at least not right now. And I know it because there is something that is off with me. There is something that is off with them. There are some things that are just not healed. So it's just not going to be a match. It's not going to work right now. 
That may not always be the case, but right now I let go with unconditional love. It's very loving. Sometimes it's loving not to respond. Sometimes the worst thing that somebody can do is continue to participate with you in the madness. That's dysfunction. Sometimes the most unconditionally loving thing that you can do is not answer the phone, not respond to a message. Now, people might not see it that way. They're not ready to. That's okay. And sometimes I've had that happen to me too, where I'm like, this person isn't returning my call. This person isn't responding to my message. It's the best thing they could have possibly done because either that's telling me we're just not on the same vibration. Maybe there was some sort of lesson that we were supposed to learn. And that lesson is now gone, done over with, or there's just something for me to learn in the silence. It's when we try to fight it, that havoc, uh, just, you know, disruption of the spirit comes through. Just all that agonizing pain comes through. We don't just sit back and think this is happening for a reason. There's a reason why there's the silence. There's a reason this person's not reaching back out to me. There's a reason why it's not working right now. I accept it. And it's all in the name of unconditional love. Okay, it's beautiful. This right here is called the Soulful Woman Oracle. Friendship. Um, a lot of the things I was just talking about really is about friendship. A lot of friends in my life. Love them very dearly, always will, will always have a special connection to them. But it is for that reason that we're just not a match right now because there's too many wounds. There's too many wounds on both sides. There's too much dysfunction. So until two people are ready to be on that same page, it's just not going to work. So I am deeply grateful for the gifts of friends. My appreciation for them is endless. I've learned a lot through friendships. It's so funny. I've always been like a relationship person. Okay, that was part of my codependency going from relationship to the relationship. But a lot of the uh, the connection that, or not not a lot of the connection, a lot of the um, the lessons that I've learned actually through the last four years have been through friends. I've, I've never learned so many things through friendship. I never knew I could actually, you know, deeply love people like friendship. So it's interesting that I have been able to learn as much as I have through friendship. So I think our soul families and our friendships and our communities are um, great teachers, helps us immensely on our journeys to grow and to heal. Also mirrors a lot of stuff back to us that we don't really want to see. <laughs> and I've had to see a couple things about myself where I'm like, damn, you are just uh, not looking that good as in talking to myself. So yeah, I've definitely had to go through the ringer with some things. This right here is called the Angel Guide Oracle. And this is our last message. It's a yes. Love it. Say yes. Say yes to shift. Say yes to change. Say yes to this rebirth. Say yes to this unconditional love. Say yes to being, you know, grateful for what you have experienced so far. Try not to focus on the losses. Try to focus on the wins, the gains, because I guarantee you guys, you have gained something through everything that you've gone through. You have gained something, whether it's wisdom, new boundaries, new belief systems, whatever. You have gained something. That right there is a positive way to look at it, and this will help to shift your vibration. So say yes to the new. Say yes to right now. Say yes to yourself. Anyways, you guys, I know that that was a uh, woo crazy, a lot of personal stuff I shared and, um, maybe I have some of you guys still, maybe I don't, it's okay. It's all about my vibration. You guys are going to match up with me. I kind of feel like, you know, each reader has their own little mini collective. So this is my little mini collective. If you're still with me, then we're resonating here. And you know, that may not always be the case. You may not resonate with me next week too. Always just check in with yourself. What feels right for you? Go for it. And if it doesn't, you know, it's cool too. I just wish all of you guys just the best on your journeys. I'm here to help you. I'm also here to go through a lot of the stuff with you guys. Um, I'm not talking at you. I'm talking with you, especially with these messages that come through. We're all in this together. All right, you guys. So, you know, you're going to see throughout the week, I might have a couple of different readings about like, you know, masculine messages and things like that. Um, but for whatever reason, I just really felt guided to do this reading today instead of focus on a soul connection to focus on, you know, like an actual twin flame connection. I wanted to just focus solely on the feminine and the journey that, um, the feminine is currently on. So take care you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.